so um the colors that i've used i usually like i say to you don't use a lot of dark colors i really really often use bright stuff colors i think like I don't use usually I don't use a lot of greens, but for these rings I I surprisingly <laughs> went a lot of the green family. Uh, and I sometimes when I do something when I do an artwork I I literally di discover colors like that I thought they were kind of useless because I wasn't used to use them. But then I discover I discover colors that I oh my god this was exactly the color that I what I needed for this part you know like for this spot or oh yeah this color is reacting really nice with this color and you just have to have fun you know just practice and try to mix colors because a lot of different like things copic is translucent when you when you like when you lay a color over another one color you have you create new colors basically and um, so this is the, the really interesting thing with Copic Markers, but I re literally discover colors and when I mix, you know, you, you may think that, oh my god, I shouldn't do this, this, but to be quite honest, in some part of the drawing, I literally mix greys with blue, with greens, and with a brown, and there's also some grey purple, you know, there's a lot of different spots when you can, um, you can see that I, that you see like oh my god like i mixed five colors and i i didn't think that they will look nice together but they do look nice for example here i mixed there's some orange greens and blues very light and when you mix them it just gives a really bright uh, soft watercolor effect and they look great together and i just like oh my god this look like this is looking great and i and i i thought they will look terrible but they look great so this is really nice so when you when you color with Copic markers, like I said, it's really nice to um, shade with a different color family. For example, when I did the dress, I've used the, the basic colors was Mimosa Yellow, YJ00, which is a really, really interesting color because this is a bit yellowish, but also kind of greeny. You know, Mimosa Yellow is a really like kind of Alice looking color. Uh, you can use it to, to start blonde hair if you want. Sometimes I use this one to start blonde hair. And you may think that you can start blonde hair with a green. But actually, since it's a yellow green, you can, you can, this is um, a color that you can, you can shade this color with the yellow family or you can shade it with the green family. And more, you can shade with the blue family if you go gradually um like on the opposite colors for example with when i start with the yellow when you yellow green i shade with green but the green can be shaded with blues and then the blues can be shaded with violets and purples you know so you're just gradually going um on the rainbow side i guess but usually i try to avoid more than three colors family because it's kind of weird looking after that um if I go on the opposite side, I can definitely shade this yellow green with a bit more of a yellow. Then I can go on oranges and and then pink, for example, and then purple again. You know, you're just going. Um, you can also perfectly fine to shade only with the yellow family. But I think when you look at something, it gives more depth and it gives something. I don't know. It it really enhances drawing and makes it really. Uh, popping i guess and kind of like i don't know i i just think it looks better i don't i don't think it looks worse if you use only the same color family but i guess when you have to work on an illustration and you want to have a uh, different color it's really nice to work in this in this way and i can like um if you want me to do a tutorial and and show the differences between like shading the, the color in the same family and shading with a different color family you can see the difference for example you can see it on my drawings here the dress was shade with yellow green zero zero and then i go gradually on the turquoise and tail colors but the, for example the the grass here was shade only with greens and you can see that the difference it's just i think it's just more like it had depth, and I really like. Well, it's just also because I really like the colors, but it has a really nice depth when you shade in a different color family. So the colors, the colors, 
I, I'm not 100% sure of the colors that I used for the dress because it was a few uh, days, uh, a few weeks ago because um, here's my chart, where's my chart, my Copic chart. Yes, it's going to be easier with this. So with this, with the dress, I start with yellow green zero zero. Then I think I've added yellow green zero six, which is where? Of course, I don't have it here. Here, which is yellowish green. Then you can add a bit more of a bluish green. So you change, you know, I'm in the yellow green. Then I change the color family and I go in a green section. Green section, this means I will add here spectrum green, which is G02. And when I just, when I say that I had colors, I really go slowly to, and I always take back the other colors to mix it together. And um, so, yeah. Just be. I don't. I'm not one hundred percent that I use this color because I think it's a bit too green. But yeah, just just in, just the color family. I think I, I think I used it, but not like just a few like just a few spots. Really, not not that much. After tier zero two, I go on this on another color family and I change to B to B G family. The blue greens. Um, I think it was the. BG 13, maybe the 15, but because I have two dead markers here, so maybe this was the, I think it was the 15, I'm not really sure about it, which is mint green, so I've used mint green, you can also use aqua if you have it, or you can use also uh, coral sea, but these are dead, <laughs> they are completely dead, I have another one here, um, so I have BG 30, 13, then I think like for really, this is like the main colors that I used. And then for the really dark spot here, I change also the color family sometimes, not really often, but I choose the BG09, for example, because it's really nice. It's really, really tiny. If you don't want to use the really dark colors, I really often try uh, a bit of blue directly. So B05, for example, can, so you can really see the gradients. You have two colors, you have three colors, Sally. you just, even four if you count it. You have ye yellow green, then I have green, then I have be blue green, and then I have blues. And this is how you're going to really create depth on, on, on a, on a sh and shape some things. Of course, there is nothing real here because in, uh, like in real life, except if you have like, like a fabric, an with if with uh, effects inside you know like the way you have built the fabric and you have different colors but usually when you look at things there's only one plain colors and the shadows are usually just grays um there's no th like usually there's no thing like shadows colors but you know this is the way that i like to work and this is great when you do like artworks to really have uh, something more, you know, just adding depth and having fun with colors. And um, since I wanted a really bright uh, yellowish blue dress, I just used these colors. But I was like, I you can do also the the opposite. You can just start with blues and go gradually under purple. You know, it's just, it's just working the same. You just change the color family gradually, going um, gar you know. Choose a color, then you choose a different color family and a darker color, then ch ch change color family and use a darker color, and you just gradually um, going like kind of diagonal effects on your color big charts, you know, choosing um, choosing colors. It's really tricky. Sometimes it just doesn't work together. Sometimes there is no blending. Uh, some colors are really hard to blend, but you know, just have to practice and choose. Uh, when you have a, a gradient that is working really nice. Maybe you should just like write it down on a, on a piece of paper or like in a notebook with the color swatches so you can just see like, okay, these colors do look really nice together and can, I can make a really great gradient effect with them, but these colors don't really look together. So you just have to practice and, um, you know, and years of your years learn or like if you have done 10 times the same 
uh, gradients, you know that these colors look nice together. So this is for the dress and this gradient effect, these colors, I used them in uh, almost all the parts of the drawing. I think uh, the yellow, like the YG00 was all around the, the grass and the leaves. And I just used the same colors to do the, um, the flowers and the leaves here. The, the gradients are in the same. Uh, yes, so this is for the green colors. Then, for, for example, for the skin. So the skin color is always tricky for me because you can have different... Uh, skin looking you have kind of like a pinky colors you can have a bit more yellowish skin or like a bigger dull skin or really tan skin or fair skin you know you can, you can choose many many ways of um, of coloring so for this particular uh, girl here I started with e e000 which is pale free pink um where it is here uh, this is the color that I really, really often use. This is what I've got them um, in inks, for example. But, where, yeah, so I start with E00. Well, not me, actually. Um, um, usually when I start the skin, I always uh, like to do the, chic, the cheeks first because I have to, uh, very often, I love to have a bit of pink on the, on the cheeks. So the pink that I use, usually I, sometimes I just start with E... 93 which is i think t rose i'm not sure yes this is t rose sometimes i use this one but if you want a bit of like if i want a really pinky thing a pinky finish on the skin i go in the rv21 23 family you know i just start with these colors and before it's dry i i put over it my e00 to blend it together and gradually adding a bit of colors around the cheeks but not too much because remember if you just put too pink too much pink or a darker pink you, you will have like really big problems to blend and the girl will end up with like cheeks full of pink it only uh, like uh, when you you just wanted a really tiny spot of the and you you end up she ended up pink so you know it's kind of tricky to work some uh, really often I just like oh I, I put too much pink so I have to blend it together it's really hard so that's why I always start with the light pink and gradually adding a bit more darker but you know less is more don't put too much pink on the cheeks because it's going to be too much pink for sure um for so for the skin I, I when I just finish the little pinky uh, looking cheeks I then so E000 Tripzilor. Then I go with skin white, which is E00. Uh, usually, it depends on the skin that you want. If you want a bit more yellowish skin, I will go with E21 or E11 sometimes. Or you can also go in with E02 if you want a bit of a pinker skin. So this is what I did here for this girl. I went with E02. Then I don't remember exactly. I think it's whoa. I think I changed the color family. I think I've used YR02, which is not the same family. And I don't know where it is. I don't have it here. I've lost a marker. Strange. Oh, here. Y02, which is light orange, you can see the, the colors. And when I when I ending up in the darker areas, sometimes I like to change color families again. So I shade sometimes with E uh, E04 because I really like this color. Sometimes I add a bit of champagne. Where is champagne color here? Because this is a bit more of a I guess like it's a pinky gray i really like champagne color i don't know like it's kind of like an ash pinky purple brown it's a really weird color but i really like it it's going really well with many many colors so sometimes i had a bit of e um e71 to have like to avoid a really bright uh because e04 is a bit more pink i guess yes yeah, a bit more bright so it doesn't you know if you have too much it's gonna be a bit too much i guess hmm doesn't make any sense but you know um on the skin i also add a bit of bd 
BZ family. And I don't know where it is. Because uh, 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 uh. some of my markers are kind of dead right now. So I. But yeah, I'm. I don't have it here. I sometimes really. I had. I like to had some of the BV family because it's giving a really cool undertone of the skin so especially if you want light skin if you have like a really light skin you can see through it so you kind of have like a bit of purple showing so this is why sometimes I'm just adding a bit of BV23 uh, or if I don't have this one um, I also had you, I also add the BV02 which is a light purple and it's working really nice just like a tiny spot other other some spots you know I just had a bit here a bit here it's it's giving a really kind of like a shadow but not too dark I guess so you can see already I I I am at seven colors for the skin I think there's another color that I've used I think here I used a bit of um I don't remember I think it's maybe is 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 I think it's the sand color or maybe chamois but yeah basically I've used I I'm pretty sure but it's it's I did this the the skin I I think it was a month ago so I'm not really really sure but um I think I've used E000 then I used E00 then E02 then I went with YR02 I had a bit of E71 and E04 then you can add a bit of BD, not the BD23, I think it's a bit too dark, but I, you can add a bit of BZ02 or BD00. I also sometimes use V0 Rand, V01, because it's a really light, bright purple, which is uh, kind of like making the skin translucent, I guess, kind of like um, transparent looking. I really like it. And on the darker area, I like to add a bit of E20. E33 which is a sand color but um yeah skin is really hard I guess and you can see like I also changed the color family a little bit of like pinky yellowish and pink again you know just change the family so you can have a really nice skin effect skin looking because the skin is not always like pure flesh colors yes so this is for the skin um then what can I tell you so I can do the skin I did all the greens and blues the hair so like I said to you the blonde hair is kind of tricky um usually I kind of failed <laughs> I failed doing it uh it gives nice practice so um yellow I think I started with yellow you can see here the family I think it was YR20 yes it looks like YR20 it's kind of like where I don't know where it is I, I have this color <laughs> but Jesus usually they are steady in the right position like I don't I don't think I think I've mixed my colors because I missed a few ba -ba 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 -bum. I don't know where it is sorry I think I started with YR20 and uh, you can also start with Y21 which is the buttercup yellow I really love that colors there's a, it's a, it's like it's really blonde like to be quite honest it's Y21 is the blonde color you can start with one Y21 you can also start with um, a bit more yellow I guess you can start with the yellow like yellow Y00 if you want um, but I found that it's it's better if you start with a bit more of ochre, uh, dull looking, you know, not a bright yellow. So I think blonde hair is nice when you start with either YR20 or Y21. Then if you want to shade blonde, you can go with directly with YR23, which I think was the case here. You can also add a bit of the earth colors. Sometimes I've just... Um, I I had the uh, the E fifty three or the E thirty three, which is a bit more of grayish. Uh, uh, you can't describe this color grayish, yellowish thing. <laughs> um, you have to so you mix this because kind of 
these two kind of like the same hue i guess so when you um, want to dark your the, the yellow and the blonde hair i like to use a uh, lioned gold i really love this color so this is y28 or the ochre y r23 i think i had a bit of yr02 again to have a bit of pink inside but then when i uh dark a bit more i like to change color family again so i went down and i choose again my champagne color to add a bit of dark spot and um i had a bit of walnut under the hair so it you know when you shade blonde hair and you want darker blonde gently gently on the brown sign because you can you know in like in two seconds it she end up with dark brown instead of blonde colors looking so just like pay attention to this and i think that the only spot the only spot when i just put brown is under here because there are shadows but uh overall you know just try and gently add more um colors and more depth because if you just put too much you will end up losing all the basic reflection and the light spots so and she will not have blonde hair anymore um yes so this is for the blonde and then the last thing are the flowers you know i um i like to mix yellows and pinks sometimes it's kind of hard because if you mix yellow and pink they end up red basically if you lay over like if you put pink over um a yellow it's going to be red or orange looking so you have to be yeah tricky it's kind of tricky to mix these colors you have to uh have the, the little connection where they color when the color is the mix it has to you have to add another color maybe had a, an orange because uh for example here you know here for example this color was uh looking nice because i start with the pink and a bit of yellow in the opposite side and i try to connect them so i end up with a bit of of orange but not so much for this one here i did uh, I did it wrong because I put too much yellow and then there was no spot for the pink so then I put pink all over it and it started to get red because it was already saturated with yellows so it's kind of hard when you do this um, the colors that I've used for the flowers um, I've used I think Y08 I, mm, I think there was also a bit of yellow zero two and the pink one that i've used is my one of my favorite one is the rz25 duck rose flower the one that i have in sketch actually and um i really really love this color it's a really really bright not not too bright when you put this on the paper it's really bright but when it settles and dries you know it's uh, it's a bit more uh fair looking you know just a bit more light but it's really it's not too bright like the rz04 or rz06 are a bit too fuchsia looking i guess the rd the rd21 to 20 uh, 29 are a bit more pink uh, but not too bright and there are also a bit there's a bit of red inside i really like these colors i use this only i really really use this only a lot uh yes i think that's it for the flowers for the 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 Kind of pink reddish flowers here i've used the uh, rv25 again with rv29 and uh, for the, the dark red here i've just used i think i don't i think i didn't use red i think i've used coral i think i've used uh r i think it's crimson maybe i think it's r37 and then i shade with r 59 yes so sorry i've shade with this one which is cardinal it's a i don't I, i've used a lot of cardinal color but uh i don't know why i've st i'm just stopped using reds <laughs> um yeah then for the purple flowers i think it's like i say i changed color family so i start i think i start with the zero six and I shade with a bit of BV or maybe a blue. I think I've shade with the royal blue. So I change color family all the time. For the orange, I always I shade with a bit of red. Um, when I yes, 
the, fl the big flower here was shaded with a bit of orange and, ye and yellows, I guess. Nothing special here. And I think that's it. And when I finished the drawing, uh, when I finished coloring, I used my color liners. And I tried to avoid too harsh... Diff like, when the, when the liner is too different from the basic colors, you can see, like... It's a bit too harsh, but like I said, I don't have a lot, a lot of different color liners. So, I, so whether I just like if I use a too light color, you can't really see it, and if I use a too dark color, you can really see it popping. So I, I try to mix them, but it's kind of, it's kind of tricky some day, sometimes. But uh, overall, I think it's just it's okay, except the except this spot is a bit too dark because I mess up here. Um, but yeah, and when I finish with the color liners, I've u I used my Deleter white ink. Where? I lost it. I use my deleter white ink number one, and um, I did a haul on this, and I should probably do a review. It's really, really great. I love this stuff. I can't believe I haven't got this like ten years ago, because <laughs> it's really, really cool. Um, I just put this in the little uh, cover. And uh, I just add a bit of water and I then just use the brush and I just did the color, um, the outline in white to make the really this, like to make it this pop, I guess. Then um, with my pen holder, this is, it's, uh, this, this thing is really hot, but the, the pen, the pen nib was a G pen from Deleter. And I use this and I just put a bit more water and then I, I just dip the pen inside and then I can add everything that I want and really precise looking. Add some whites in, uh, not too much in the, in the hair because you, you, it's just weird looking if you add too much because you end up with white hair, you know. Uh, just a few strokes uh, to add a bit of like depth and shine to the drawing. Uh, I also had a bit of shine in some flowers you know just tiny tiny spots in the flowers i had to add uh to bring the flowers back to life because you know when you just put too much dark colors it kind of like it's kind of like they're falling in the drawings because they are a bit further from you you, you can like the the, the way the, the, the color the way the color reacts to your eyes kind of make makes you feel like it's really it's going far away from you and when you had bright colors it's kind of like popping and it goes directly in your face so when you mix them together if you have dark spots and a bit of white over, over it is going to really great depth and kind of like a dynamic in the in the drawing so this is why i always add a bit of whites uh, i do this on almost every part not too much you know because sometimes i think i put too much and um yeah and someone asked me why i put like some uh, white dots everywhere uh, this is a really like a manga thingy. I don't know if you have look at the um, uh, the the Sakura Kakato Sakura art books. This is like I've got all the art books, almost all the art books and clump illustrations. They always have this little white dots, and I do like why they are putting white dots. It's, it's kind of weird. And actually, when you can see the difference with and without, when you have like little white dots, don't put too much. Sometimes you put too much. So this is why for this. Uh, drawing I only add a few and really like tiny and just like this is going to leave like kind of like a bubbly feeling kind of like it's it's kind of like little um, spot of lights and it just makes the drawing really it adds up to the dynamic of the drawing and also it's kind of like it's making it more 3d looking because you have bigger and smaller it's kind of like there are little creatures floating all around and i think it was like really obvious for me to put them because this is a really like uh it's kind of like a bubbly uh whimsical feeling you know of uh of this in this drawing so i guess like it was um great to have this little white spots just pic i picture them as little little creatures but Sometimes, sometimes it's true. Sometimes I just I think I shouldn't put them. But for this particular ring, I think if they they was like it was kind of forced. I I was oh yeah you know I I sh it was obvious to me that I had to put them. Uh, kind of running out of words. Sorry. <sighs> I think that's it. You know, for I think I talked enough. Uh, I'm sorry if you're bored. Um, this is just like the first time that I do this kind of like review. On, on my own artwork, on my own stuff. 
Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, this particular illustration, this particular illustration, is in sale. Uh, it's sold in my Tawanda shop. So if you want to check it out, you just can go under the video, and you have the link to this illustration. And um, I know it's kind of expensive for most of you, but um, I spent a lot, a lot of time on this. So that's why, um, and if you can't afford it, and if you, like, if you still want the artwork, um, I, I'm working, like, I think I will edit a photo print of this, a glossy photo print, and I want to know, like, do you want it, do you want me to, uh, to, like, do photo prints of this illustration, and maybe some of her, like, maybe some of my other artworks, um, you know, just tell me if you want it, so I can, like, um, do the like and get order them to to have the the, the photo prints and then and then sell them on my Dawanta shop because I don't want like to I don't know how many uh, should I like uh, make ten or fifteen or just or maybe like there is no one who wants them <laughs> but uh, yeah so just tell me below if you want like to have a photo print a glossy photo print probably this uh, I think it's going to be a bit smaller than the actual size of the drawing. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. Maybe it's going to be the same size, uh, but um, just tell me below if you want a photo print of this illustration on my Tawanda shop or any kind of other illustration, basically. And I think it's going to be a bit cheaper. It's going to be around twenty dollars shipping included, so it's really much much cheaper than the original artwork. Uh, I think that's it for this um, art work review I guess and um, I will see you very soon and uh, also we are around well not close but we are very close to getting um, 4,000 subscribers on this channel so this is really really amazing and I really appreciate the support um, and if you if you manage manage to reach to 4,000 subscribers I will do a contest slash giveaway uh, so yes this is going to happen very soon I hope I think that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you're not bored with this video, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye bye.